What's up, everybody? This is Tower Seven Twenty Two. Dang news. And I was cleaning yesterday, so of course I brought down my PV speakers down into the basement while I was cleaning. And I started cleaning. I got a lot of cobwebs out. I still got a lot more to go. I can't really see them too well. But anyhow, um, ignore the hard drive in the wall. I know some people have been dying to see that. Ignore the holes, but whatever. Anyhow, um, I know some people have been wondering um, how the crossover and tweeters uh, work and subwoofers work in these speakers and I kind of wanted to give you a sound test of them they're probably wondering and I'm going to be playing some bassy music now I'm not very big on bassy music of course I've only I've honestly really um I've honestly really like classic rock and 80s rock and power pop and that kind of stuff and it's just what I like to listen to I'm my old school kind of guy and um I love listening to that stuff and these speakers play that shit Amazingly, <laughs> don't get me wrong, it plays it pretty good. And uh, these speakers respond better to rock and pop than uh, bass or rap music and uh, pure bass stuff. So the question you're probably wondering is, can they handle it? And that's a big yes, but they won't handle it near as good as a Yorkville will. I don't know what it is about Yorkville DJ speakers, but they can just handle any frequency when it comes to the lows like nothing. And uh, they're pretty good at that. So if you ever ever want to use a DJ gig where you got two PVs here handling the mids and the highs, and you have like a Yorkville, just set up the Yorkvilles as your base. That's just always that's a must. I kind of want to get my hands on some Yorkvilles, even if they are the small driver versions, because even then they can still drive some bass. And these are really good for mids and uh, above. Anyhow, I'm going to be playing some bassy music out of this because I know a couple of people have been pretty curious. And, um, another thing is, now, when I do, I'm going to do some frequency sweeps, and actually, you're going to hear the tweeter try to sing to this. And that's kind of demonstrating something, and what that's demonstrating is, that's demonstrating the good old uh, crossover, trying to make both the tweeter and the subwoofer sing. Now, you're probably wondering, well, if you play a 1 hertz tone, then the subwoofer's going to move, but you're going to hear the tweeter, and you're going to think, that's stupid, Pro Audio shouldn't do that. And you're wrong. It should. And the reason why is because if you're playing, and this is a good example, I don't know if you'll fully understand it, but if you're playing rap music through the subwoofer, and you don't have any kind of crossover, and you just have the tweeter wired directly up, and you start trying to play some, um, and you start trying to play music out of it, such as, uh, just rap music, and they've got the bass going, and you've also got, the, like, the, the rattling out of a, or you also have, like, a, a cymbal being hit, like, I know how most rap music, how they have the bass and then they have like a little cymbal being hit. Or they also have like the maracas being hit for extra sound uh, dynamics. And um, when you play that, and normally if you don't have a crossover or anything kind of thing, the tweeter won't really hit those, and nor will the subwoofer. But the subwoofer and everything else will try to hit those highs. And because the subwoofer's got so much movement in it, it'll come out really fuzzy and it'll sound really bad. Now... The way the crossover is rigged in these is to make both the tweeter and the subwoofer sing in the both notes. And although the tweeter can only produce the highs out of the lower notes, such as if you're playing one hertz, you're going to hear... That's a shitty uh, mocking of it. But anyhow, you will hear the tweeter sing, and you might think that that's stupid, but believe it or not, that does help out. I'm also going to demonstrate it with... Uh, some music I will be playing that's probably very common by now. I might be playing two sets of music. So this video might be kind of long. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go to programs. And we're going to go to, where is it? Dacity. We're going to play some uh, Dacity out of here. Of course, we're going to bring my speakers up out of here. This thing is a very nice sound processor in it, so it'll... Oh, of course, you got to turn the mic or the amp on. I'm actually going to leave the compressor off, and the reason why is because 
the compressor will try to compress certain notes and of course that's not really good so I'm just going to generate a tone and the tone is going to be one hurt and I'm going to turn it all the way up so you can hear it screaming and like I said that's the crossover making the tweeters squeal like I said these things really don't handle the uh, low lows very nicely because they're more made for rock music and of course they got the dual tweeters in them so they're screaming my ears out right now so I'm gonna play a tone maybe with a little bit of uh, better frequency here I have these things cranked all the way up so do mind that this is gonna blow up my ears 20 Hertz this is gonna rattle the basement not really rattling but you can hear the tweeters responding to the Hertz and that's something you want believe it or not trust me on that we're gonna go maybe I don't know 50 Hertz or no 500 or 100 Hertz that's usually with the or I don't know maybe 200 these things respond at 200 Hertz beautifully actually as far as I know Okay, that was loud. That just blasted my eardrums out. But you can tell they respond to uh, 100 hertz pretty nicely. Anything from 200 to 100, like anything from 100 up or uh, like 150 up, they respond pretty nicely. They just can't do the very, very lows. I don't know what it is about them. They just can't really handle that. Now I'm going to be playing one of the most overused and ridiculous bass songs ever. If I could just find my mouse. I don't know where my mouse went. I don't have that function right up on it. Okay, here it is. Anyhow, I'm going to be playing the most overused... Oh, whoa, that was loud. I'm going to be playing one of the most overplayed bass songs ever made, if I even have it on my computer, which I might just... I don't know. I, over the years, I've collected uh, some different types of music, even the stuff that I don't really listen to, just for kind of like laughs and giggles. Oh, I do. I have bass I love you on here. And I know that a lot of people are going to get pissed off at me for using this piece. This is probably the most overused bass song ever. I just want to give you a good demonstration because bass I love you uses a lot of highs, but at the same time uses a very lot of amount of lows. And basically, I just want to show you here that the subwoofers can't handle both of them at the same time. So that's why I'm playing this. Anyhow, here we go. <laughs> some distortion as I noticed and that was mainly out of and also my eardrums are bleeding <laughs> but there was just some distortion out of here and I think that's because the amplifier can't really handle the input being driven into this thing the volume might be turned up a little bit too loud and honestly I think I might have the bass set up a little bit in here so I'm going to turn on the compressor because that's what the compressor is made to do it's made to equalize what's being thrown into it so it doesn't sound like ass and uh, I'm just going to turn up the uh frequency response with a little bit of higher stuff here and we're gonna play that again so here we go hopefully this sounds a lot better
enough of that. I've gotten so sick of that song, it's not even ridiculous. I used to play that song a lot because I don't know if you knew about this, but years, maybe three or four years back, I used to make little uh, little stereo speakers that you would use in PA systems and stuff, and I just got like so obsessed with playing music out of those. They sounded like crap, but uh, they played it. <laughs> and of course, I've got a couple more uh, like basic useless subwoofer tests crap on here. So we're gonna play something else that, and you will hear it cut out. That is not my speakers doing that. It's just a shitty recording of the song. And so I uh, don't think it's my speakers. Trust me, these things don't distort easy. And that's for sure. Here we go. I'm gonna restart the song because the lows are in the beginning, but I'm gonna head upstairs and you're gonna hear how crazy this is. Jeez. She has not a shit in the world for this stuff. Alright, one thing's for sure, I can definitely feel through the floor, which is, uh... Whoa, that drop! Which is definitely kind of scary. I'm gonna, like, turn that off before it does any collateral damage upstairs. Okay, I definitely think that the window was rattling. I could definitely uh, see it moving a little bit, so that's out of the equation. <laughs> Let's not play that anymore. Now I have one last thing I want to play, and it's called Turbo Tranny. Now Turbo Tranny is something made by, uh, made by, who, that's the name, um, one of Garrett Claridge's friends. And he's played it in a couple of his videos, and honestly, the only reason I like the song for testing speakers is because of the way that the, uh, Frequency response in it. It really just kind of tests the frequency response on the camera, or not on the camera, on the speakers, which is something that you normally can't find out of a. Which is something you normally can't find out. I don't even know if I have. Turbo training turbo. Okay, here we go. Oops. response. Now just a little recap of this. What I mean is that as you can see with the drums being played, 
And as you can hear like the little drums and the cymbals being, or I don't know, the maraca being hit. As you can hear, there's no distortion from that, from the subwoofer. It's all coming out of the tweeter, and that's the whole point of the mid-range. As we tend to go on into the song, it brings the notes higher and higher, which it'll start doing. I just wanna, I can definitely feel it through the floor. Stuff in my grandma's room is rattling, that's for sure. of it. Anyhow, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Anyhow, you get the overall view that these things can handle amazing frequency response. That's mainly the whole demo of this video, but uh, I also think uh, some bass lovers would get the thrill of just feeling the subwoofers out of bassy shit, and uh, there you go. You've seen it. So anyhow, I'm going to be honest with you. When I play bass, I love you. I've never seen those woofers move more in my freaking life. That was actually pretty crazy. So I didn't think uh, passive subwoofers like these 15-inch uh, PV Scorpions could move like that. And of course, there's another damn telemarketer calling me because, you know, they don't leave me the fuck alone. It's pissing me off. That's all they do is call me all day. Jesus Christ. I'm just going to let it ring. Screw it. Anyhow, ignore it. But, um, anyhow, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a great day. I, thought, I, I know a couple people, especially Technology's Edge, does Sam Nudge, and maybe TSL Tyler might find this kind of interesting. Uh, and I think, honestly, I found it kind of interesting. I didn't know these woofers could move that much, and uh, kind of surprising. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching. Hit right, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Alright, well, another thing I forgot to mention, and this is... I wish I put this all in one video, but whatever. Um, listen, most people that listen to audio, they always think it's about the bass. It's all about the bass, you know? It's not about the bass, okay? And I clearly just demonstrated, and the reason why I played that bassy music is I wanted to demonstrate how the frequency response was between the woofers and the tweeters uh, working in partnership to order to make good sound. And that was the whole point of this video, was to show you how frequency response is key, and how although the tweeters were picking up ridiculously low levels more than the woofers was it was still making a better response because as you can hear it at 20 hertz at the frequency sweep you could listen that the uh... that the tweeters were picking up an equal amount of uh... bass that the um... woofers were and this is key in pro audio a lot of uh... posers or car audio people might be playing um... would usually be playing this kind of shit uh, and just have like all subwoofers, no tweeters, and just play like these really farty bass subwoofers and just play music and it sounds like crap. It just sounds like crap. And they just want to do it because they want to feel bass. They want to feel bass. No, that's not the whole point of music, man. That's not. It's about the frequency response of the, of the, um, of the, um, what's the name? 
or the speakers and how good it sounds. And these things, even though they're not made to play as low music as I play through them, they played it pretty good and I'm pretty impressed. And when I played bass, I love you, I didn't even think those woofers could move like that. I know that they definitely could move, I just didn't know they could move like that. So that was uh, pretty impressive. Of course, Bass I Love You is more of a woofer stress test as it moves it uh, very dynamically. It's pretty crazy how uh, Bass I Love You does that. Bassatronics or whatever their name is, they, uh, they do some pretty interesting uh, subwoofer tests and some pretty interesting frequency response tests. But as you can definitely see that it was able to, um, it was able to res the tweeter was able to respond to the higher notes while the subwoofer was being completely utilized to play those ridiculously movements other's oh, ridiculously movement so the tweeter was able to take over and I did notice one thing when I played bass I love you and I don't think this was a part of the uh the I don't think this is what the speaker is supposed to do and there are some defaults in having uh, a crossover is because I noticed a really low there was supposed to be a really low in the song and I heard the uh, tweeter actually play that low and it didn't sound like it was supposed to do that at least not from when I remember the song being played. So I do notice that there was one part where the crossover kind of failed in its action. But then again, like I said, these things are made for but kind of like rock music. They're not really made so much for bassy stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. Pay right, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Just to replace a couple.